Good morning, everyone. Dobro horanku. Buona dimineza. And welcome to a new lecture within our Jean Monnet Open Online Course of European Integration. Today, we have a really important topic, and it's not only important, it's also a topic that most of the students have been asking about. And it's the topic of international trade and international finance and the relations with European integration and also with economic development. So the title of the course today, the, mm, today's lecture will be about international trade, international finance and development. <coughs> and because it's St. Andrew's Day today, we have more people who join us because it's a holiday and some of the students who are not able to attend our lectures live because they work, they are able to join today. Today we have with us uh, Christian Hritzkan, we have Paula Raskitoriu, we have Irina Kachuk, and we have Kirill uh, from different places. Yes, we have people from Yash and people from Chernivtsi and people from Zhitomer. Thank you all very much for your presence. We are also um, webcasting this uh, lecture live on, on YouTube and we also have uh, on YouTube uh, Oksana Iliuk from Chernivtsi who is joining us today uh, on YouTube. On YouTube, we have five simultaneous connections. You know, you have a chat and you can write on the chat. I will share now the link to the Google Hangout on YouTube too, for those who want to join us uh, live. Also, Armand Sadowski has just uh, joined. Armand was one of the people who was very interested in international uh, development economics. So it's the, the macroeconomic part, the international part of development economics. Uh, thank you very much for your presence too. We also have Zoya who has uh, just uh, uh, joined now. Uh, Thank you all for your presence. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start with international trade, right? Because we know that we have studied the European Union. The European Union is about uh, trade, it's about free trade in Europe. And uh, we are interested especially this, this year our Jean Monnet Open Online course is particularly focused on economic development and we want to understand how international trade affects development or how development affects international trade. And we start with some empirical data, some uh, stylized facts, yes? that you should know about international trade. And you should know that there's um, a lot of international trade going on. It's in more and more international trade. In fact, globalization is very much about the increase of international trade. Probably you have a mobile phone that comes from a different country or you drove to to school in a, in a bus that was produced in a different country and uh, you buy bananas that were produced in yet another country so we are living in a globalized world in which international trade is increasingly important but there are some stylized facts that you should know about trade. And these 
are that developed countries the develop the, the countries the what's the so-called the global north trades with the global south so developed and less developed countries trade with each other you should also know that developed countries trade with each other the eu trades with the us with canada yes and um, this is a second important fact but the third one is that developing countries less developed countries do not trade with each other very much yes so this is something empirical to start with and that we will try to explain on youtube now we also have uh, cornelia petrovic from suchava marisha marisha giriada from chernitsi buna dimineaza marisha and georgiana paduraru from yash all of them are connecting now uh, irina kachuk is in is in Chernivtsi. There is a group of students there with her. Thank you also for your presence. Dobro uh, And we we continue with the lecture. Today is a special day. It's St. Andrew's Day, and we are celebrating St. Andrew's with a special lecture on international trade, international finance, and development so the facts developed countries trade with less developed countries developed countries trade with other developed countries less developed countries do not trade with other less developed countries yes good this is a little bit of empirical information now the theories the positive theories that will try to help us explain this reality of world trade and the the theories probably most of you because many of you are philosophers yes for instance armand sadowski is a great philosopher in yash and he um, probably has read the classical uh, writings of Adam Smith because in Yash it's a place where they write with the fountain pen you know it's a traditional place where when my child went to school they told me that I should buy a penitza for him to write slowly with a fountain pen and the, the, the people at the uh, University of Yash in the Faculty of Philosophy they know the classics yes and adam smith in the field of economics is is a classic you probably know him as a, one of the great promoters of free trade he wrote a book which was called the wealth of nations and uh, as you see the classical economists when they studied the economy they were interested in the same topics we are interested in now in development so development economic development is a classical topic this book the wealth of nations is about also about development why some nations are wealthy or why some nations are wealthier than other and this book the wealth of nations uh, introduces some concepts yes the, it introduces the important concept of the division of labor the importance of specialization probably i have told you already if not i tell you again this example that appears in the book like in a pin factory uh, uh, compared to an artisan that makes pins an artisan that makes pins has to uh, produce, uh, has to straighten the wire, has to cut the wire, has to weld the head of the pin, has to sharpen the pin, and it takes a long time, maybe 
to make a pin it can take for an artist some 15 minutes or so yes and then adam smith looks at, at a factory a factory or a pin factory and looks like how work is specialized and there's one person that is specialized just in straightening the wire one person just specialized in cutting the wire one person just specialized in welding the head of the pin and one person specialized in sharpening the pin and all together working in the factory in a specialized way they are able to produce more than one pin every 15 minutes per person yes maybe they are four times or ten ten times as productive and this is because of specialization or the division of labor that adam smith calls adam smith was a philosopher he was a professor at the university of glasgow in scotland and he was a professor of moral philosophy so as you see from the start from the classics the fields of philosophy and e economics are very close together adam smith can be considered as the first uh, modern economist the most important one good so uh, this idea of specialization and the and the and the gains of specialization of the division of labor adam smith extends it to countries and he says that countries can also specialize many people are writing um, to me that they have problems i will have to disconnect my facebook because uh, i think people in chernitsi are facing problems uh, I think the main problem in Chernivtsi is is that Oksana, Oksana Iliuk is ill today and he stayed home and I think she was the one who who made the connection there in in Chernivtsi in Valentina's group. But you can watch also on YouTube if you like. There are now seven, eight simultaneous connections on YouTube. You can write on the chat, Cornelia Petrovici, Marisha, Giriada, Georgiana Paduraru, Oksana Iliuk. They are all on, on, on YouTube today. Thank you all very much. Adam Smith extends these potential gains from specialization to international trade relations between countries. And he says that if a country specializes in the production of one good, another country specializes in the production of other good, and then they trade, they exchange the good, they can be more productive and they can be wealthier. So he thinks that free trade uh, is something that makes countries wealthier. Yes? So he's one of the, the, the is the most famous proponent of free trade and he introduces the concept of absolute advantage with adam smith we have this concept that countries will trade and each country will specialize in the production of those goods in which they are more produ more productive where they can produce it more quantity in the same amount of time for instance yes so if you have uh, bananas and in one country you can produce uh, bananas like uh, 100 kilos of bananas per worker per week and in other country you can just produce 10 then you will specialize in the country where you are more productive and this is the concept of absolute advantage yes but a later economist called david ricardo it's an english uh, economist david ricardo 
introduces another concept, which is the concept of comparative advantage. It says that it doesn't matter that maybe the United States is better at producing bananas, it's better at producing cars, it's better at producing uh, sugar, it's better at producing uh, mobile phones and everything than Cuba. Yes, it's more product more productive in everything. Yes, but this doesn't mean that uh, trade cannot happen between both countries, because the 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 there's this concept of comparative advantage introduced by David Ricardo. David Ricardo says that it is not only important that you are the best at something. Yes, what is important is that, is that you are relatively bet, better at something. So maybe the, the US is better than Cuba in everything. Yes, but Cuba is uh, comparatively better than the US, for instance, in the production of sugar or in the production of rum. Yes. Although the US could produce more productively than Cuba, it doesn't pay. And I give you an example. Maybe you know Hamilton or you know Fernando Alonso or Kimi Raikkonen or uh, Felipe Massa, yes? or the, the, the classic Ayrton Senna, the, the Formula One drivers, yes? The Formula One drivers drive very well. And probably they drive better a taxi than most of the taxi drivers, yes? If Fernando Alonso had to drive a taxi, had to be a taxi driver, he would be the best taxi driver yes but it doesn't mean that fernando alonso will be a taxi driver it doesn't mean that fernando alonso will take the jobs from the taxi drivers just because he can drive better than they than they do why is that it is because it's true fernando alonso is maybe uh, twice as productive as a regular taxi driver right but as a formula 1 driver he is 1000 times more productive than a taxi driver so he prefers to specialize in driving form formula 1 cars and not taxis and the same happens with countries the us is better than cuba in everything yes but it doesn't mean that there will be no possibility for trade between Cuba and the United States because even though the US maybe it's twice as productive in the production of sugar or rum as Cuba, it doesn't pay for them. They prefer to specialize in producing mobile, uh, mobile phones or computers, Apple computers in California, or they prefer to produce Ford cars, or they prefer to specialize on other things in which they are relatively, comparatively, much more productive. And this is the theory, which is a positive theory, of comparative advantage introduced by David Ricardo. Yes? So this explains that trade will happen uh, uh, and you will specialize in, in those goods in which you are comparatively more productive. Yes? Good. This was introduced by David Ricardo. But our next question is, but what makes some countries more productive than others in the production of certain goods what is it to make uh, 
you, your country more productive in the production of uh, sugar relative to the production of Apple computers? Why don't they produce Apple computers in Cuba and they produce sugar in California? Why? What is it that drives world trade? Yes? What are the bases? What creates world, uh, world trade? And the, and the question is, um, is an interesting one. And there is also a theory, also a positive theory, trying to explain this reality. And it's called the heckscher uling model. Heckscher Oling model. I think Oling is pronounced Uling. I think it's a Swedish name. And I did my Erasmus studies in Finland when I was there. In Finland, some people speak Swedish too. And so my 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 professor of economics, uh, an old one, I th he he died already, uh, Veiko Reinikainen, and he I, I, I remember he pronounced Uling. So it's probably the Heckscher Uling model, right? It says that what drives comparative advantage is factor endowments. It says that countries will be comparatively more efficient in the production of goods that require the factors of production that are abundant in that country yes so relative factor endowments is what creates comparative advantage for different goods so if in cuba you have lots of sun sunshine yes but you have very few factories and in california they also have the sunshine but they relatively they have more factories then this could explain why they can produce sugar in cuba and they can produce uh, apple computers in california it's the factor endowment yes this is very important for us to understand trade uh, international trade. I give you an example now. It's very important for development. Why does India? Why is India a world power in software development? Why are so many Indian software developers? Yes. It is because. For producing software, you need people, you need brains, you, you need persons. And in India, there are many people and many brains, yes? And for producing software, you do not need to have uh, much capital. You, you just need to have one computer that is relatively very cheap. So India specializes in the production of software the same happens with romania inside the eu why is romania a great power in the production of software in the eu why does romania export so much software to other eu countries well it's because romania has people has young people but Romania does not have capital. And if you have people, but you do not have capital, the kind of jobs where you can be good at are, for instance, software development. Because for producing software, you need people and you do not need capital. A computer is very cheap, yes? Why does the... the hmm, Germany specialized in the pro production of machines, in the production of factories. Why does Germany have Siemens and has 
uh, factories for 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 uh, machines that then are used for robots for instance why are the robots that are used then in factories worldwide why are they produced in germany because you need capital to produce them yes why does the um, Romania specialized in the production of Dacia cars, cheap cars, yes, and not the expensive one. Why are not Mercedes cars produced in Romania? Yes, because you need much more capital to produce those kinds of cars, right? So Romania specializes in the production of software and Germany specializes in the production of machines and robots and so on. Yes, good. So the Hackshiruli model explains this, explains comparative advantage based on factor endowments, based on the factors of production in which you are abundant or which are scarce in your country. You will specialize in the goods and services for which you need to use the factor of production that is abundant in your country. Yes, this explains trade. Yes, for instance, trade between developing countries and developed countries. Why do developing countries export? fruits, vegetables, agricultural products to developed countries? And why do they import uh, manufacturers and cars and so? It's because of factor endowments, yes? Good. But it is not so easy. Yes, this initial model, the Heckscher-Uli model, is a model that is good enough to help us explain for instance why romania specializes in the production of software and why silicon valley california specializes in the production of hardware yes but that is not enough yes because for instance there was this um uh, American economist of Russian origin called Leon Kiev, who tried to test the Heckscher-Uli model empirically. And he tried to collect data from the United States trade to see if it conformed with the predictions of the Heckscher-Uli model. Because we say the models that we explain are positive models. They are models that are based on observation, based on reality, and that try to explain reality. And the quality of a positive model is given by its ability to explain reality accurately. Yes. So Leontiev collected trade data to try to explain the trade of the United States with other countries, the international trade of the US, and try to confirm the Heckscher-Uli model. So the hypothesis of the Heckscher-Uli model is that you will specialize. Hi, Georgiana. I put you in mute. You specialize in the in the productions of goods in which you have a lot of the factor of production that is needed to produce them. And the US is the country in the world that has more capital per worker. The US is a very rich country with a lot of capital per worker. Remember also from previous lectures, remember the Harrod Domar model that explains development, economic development by increasing the uh, ratio of capital per worker. In, in one country. Yes, the US is a very advanced economy with a lot of capital per worker. So if we apply the Heckscher Uli model, we would expect that the US would export capital intensive goods 
and would import work labor intensive goods but the leontief data analysis showed that this was not the case it showed that the us exported goods that were labor intensive not capital intensive and this was a paradox and this is called Leontief's paradox. Don't forget for the exam. Leontief's paradox. Yes? It's the paradox that the Heckscher-Uli model would expect that the U.S. would export capital-intensive goods because the U.S. has more capital per worker than other countries. But in fact, in reality, Leontief found out that the U.S. exported not capital intensive goods but labor intensive goods how can we explain that there have been more recent analysis of the data and this analysis in 1962 and even later they have confirmed this paradox the leon tf paradox so the us exports goods that use a lot of labor instead of that use a lot of capital why one possible explanation for this is the idea of human capital if we just consider capital and labor yes which leontief did it's possible that the us exports uh, labor intensive goods but the they are goods that are intensive in one kind of labor that is different from the labor used in china or in in romania it is a highly skilled labor yes it is um not like the labor in in china for instance yes and if we introduce the concept of human capital yes if we consider that there are not just two factors of production capital and labor we consider that there's physical capital there's human capital and there's labor then this would solve leon Tief's paradox for instance yes good but this model the heckscher uli model is the most important model for you to understand the patterns of world trade yes why some countries specialized in the production of some goods and other countries specialize in the production of other goods its factor endowments is one of the of the explanations good but these models the the models that we saw the from ricardo's comparative advantage uh, theory to the heckscher uli model they try to explain specialization that could explain for instance why the us could trade with cuba or why the us trades with china or why germany trades with romania there are different countries with different capital endowments and they specialized in that in which they are good at which is in which they are uh, well endowed in terms of the resource the, the the factors of production needed okay and that's why also cuba produces sugar or rum or it's because of factor endowments but this would not explain why germany trades so much with the uk or with france because they are countries that are very similar countries and they have very similar capital endowments they have similar capital per worker yes and also what they trade is very similar things they trade for instance 
cars yes so germany exports volkswagen cars and imports renault cars from france germany exports porsche cars to italy and imports lamborghini cars from italy this is not explained by the hexerulli model yes why why is there this um, trade between countries that are very similar in products that are very similar yes and there are new trade theories that try to explain this yes and these theories are based on the idea of um, economies of scale yes it would not be profitable to produce um, Renault cars in Germany and Volkswagen cars also in Germany and Renault cars and Volkswagen cars in France it's better than one specializes in Renault cars and the other in Volkswagen cars but not because they could not produce the other kind of car it's just because of economies of scale it does not pay to have two factories in each country it's better to have one specialized in Renault in one country and one specialized in Volkswagen in Germany because of economies of scale yes there's also the so-called Linder hypothesis that says that trade does not depend only on the supply side of the economy it's not only depends on factors of production it depends also on demand and it says that countries that have similar levels of development usually demand the same kinds of products and if they demand the same kinds of products there's this possibility for for this kind of intra-industry trade which is trade within the same industry right so developed countries trade with each other why because they have similar levels of development which means several similar tastes for products and similar kinds of products that they would like to buy and they can afford to buy and at the same time also there are economies of scale and, and there is this competition between different brands of the same kind of product products are not exactly uh, uh, the same yes this is called monopolistic competition is the, the the term the formal term in economics monopolistic competition france has the monopoly for production of renault cars and the uh, germany for the production of volkswagen cars but there's competition between different monopolies because when you go to buy a car you can choose a Renault car, Volkswagen car, or you can even choose Toyota car or a Ford or any other kind of brand. Yes. So we started the lecture trying to explain world trade, trying to explain the fact why developed countries trade with developing countries. And the Hexerulin model can explain why. Yes. It's because they have different factor endowments. Yes. Why the, um, how do you call this? In, in, in Romania, there are so many. I remember there was a student in the Faculty of Philosophy, and um, I met him at a lecture later. 
and I asked him what he did. Yes, my my wife asked him, and he said, "I work in uh, informatics, in computer science." And he said, "But how come? Because you studied philosophy. How is it possible?" And he and he said, "No, he worked in one of these um, tele." Telephone come. How how do you call them? Please tell me, Christian. I forgot the name. How do you call these companies where people uh, work on the phone all, uh, all the time and they give customer service? It's telecom. Call, call centers. Yes. Yeah, call yes. Center. yes. He told me. Uh, Paula Rashkitor said call center. That's that's right. So he worked in a call center, right? Because a call center is something that is labor intensive, where you use a lot of people and very little capital. And that explains why the call centers are in Romania and why the telephones for the call centers are produced in a different country. Yes, where they have more capital per worker. And there's this specialization. So the, the the models that we've seen can explain this first pattern of trade that we identified at the beginning of the lecture. There's trade between developed and developing countries. Yes. The second pattern of trade is that there's trade between developed and developed countries. And how can this be explained? It's because of the Linder hypothesis that says that demand also affects trade. And if you have a demand for, for certain products, it can affect which kind of product you will uh, need in one country and you will produce in your country or you will import. So demand is important. But also the new trade uh, theories that explain how there's monopolistic competition and how countries can specialize in the production of a given uh, product within a mon uh, uh, for within the same sector. For instance, you produce. Volkswagen cars in Germany, and you produce Renault cars in France. Yes, so this is also explained. This was the second pattern that we wanted to explain. But why do developing countries do not trade with each other? Yes, they have the same tastes for things. They all want to buy. Uh, rice or wheat or bananas to live and survive yes why do they not trade with each other well it's because in the production of those kinds of goods there's not this idea of the economies of scale that explain why you have one factory of renault in france and one factory of volkswagen in germany Yes, so they do not trade with each other because they have similar conditions and the heck model would not predict trade and the new trade models would not predict trade either because they do not have a demand for the kinds of products in which there can be intra-industry trade, which is the kind of products in which they are economies of scale. Good, <clears throat> very good. So we have still five uh, people watching on YouTube and we have many people connected. One of these people is the great philosopher Armand Sadowski from Yash. I don't know if he, he has a microphone or not. Armand, can, can, you, can you talk? Or you do not have a microphone? No, he doesn't have it yet. Well, this confirms what we said about world trade. Yes, 
it's the lack of capital right capital is something that makes you productive yes instead of a fountain pen you have a ball pen it's more productive and you can produce more but if you have a typewriter it's even more productive and if you have a computer with uh, software with word processing software then you are even more productive yes the same happens to us yeah? we use technology for our lectures and the more capital that we have the more productive that we can be yes if we had for instance at the university good rooms with uh, access to internet with computers with projectors or with big screens and so we could have the lectures there yes or even better if each of us at home would have a good internet connection and we would have good computers and and would have microphones and cameras and everything it would be even better but this means capital and as we saw in the previous lectures it takes time to accumulate capital yes because at the beginning when you are uh, starting to develop and you can dedicate all your savings to increasing your stock of capital but it comes a point when buying more capital does not increase productivity so much on the one hand and on the other hand you already have so much capital that just to maintain your existing capital just to replace the capital that remains old that remains obsolete that no longer works that need repairs that consumes all your savings yes but capital is important it's very very important and it's very important not only for capitalism yes it's very important for socialism too yes In socialism they realize it's important capital is important this book the the socialist books they talk about capital they do not say that capital is not important they say they do not like capital to be in private hands yes and they want capital to belong only to the state but they do not say capital is not important so this message goes for armand sadovsky it would be a really great thing yes if you manage to um, to find a laptop computer or something which you would have a camera and a microphone and it will work yes it will make all of us more productive talking about this um probably you have seen that i have introduced uh, some new um columns in our role of honor i will share my screen with you now can you see it it's my uh, i go to the course the Jean Monnet Open Online Course of European Integration, which is uh, specially focused on economic development this year. I don't know, next year maybe we choose a different topic, right? And we have, let me see this course. I was not logged in. I have to log in. Role of honor. There it is. I will try to explain the new role of honor. You will see in this role of honor who the leaders are. The leaders are Arthur, Christian, and Irina. Yes? 
because the new role of honor it bases the uh, the results of a team on the results of all the team members right but the um, before we had a system in which we added all the points so this team would have 138 points another team 123 points which is good but now what we look also is at the minimum number of points in the team this is based on the principle that the military use uh, which is called um, no man left behind yes and it is the idea of no member of your team to be left behind which is a very important principle for a team for building a team is not to be on individualistic not only being selfish and thinking about how many points you do you think about the points of your entire team but you also think about the points of each individual member of the team so <clears throat> Sierra team is a very good team because the minimum number of points in the team is 19. The second team, whiskey team, the minimum number of points is 17. The minimum number of points in the black team, in Georgiana's team, the third team now, yes, is 14 which is a very good thing, yes? What does this mean to have this role of honor that takes into account this principle of no student left behind? The idea is that people like, um, people like Armand Sadowski are very important, yes? because they are in teams that teams overall are doing quite well you see the team has 74 points and other teams had 15 points but it have a great potential to grow because it's very easy to grow on the scale to grow in the ranking because of this you see six points if armand joins the website today he will automatically have seven points for his team in this column and he will raise three places in the ranking for his team you see and if he votes on a colleague's uh, comment or something he will even raise another position extra so this means that everybody is important in one team and also those who are lagging behind there are some teams for instance the red team that have lots of points 183 points but they do not have such a great uh, rank because there's they are leaving behind some of the team members <coughs> no student left behind georgiana <coughs> please remove your mute georgiana yeah. <coughs> what do you think about this i think it's a good idea because um, uh, because we have teams and we must work together. <coughs> so it's the principle which encourages us to work together. Now so it encourages you even more, you know, because sometimes people say, oh, I make so many points myself that yes, and I do not point. care about the other people, I can grow. <laughs> <laughs> just by making points myself and well, in this way 
you will not be allowed to do that because you need to take care of your team member of your team members which was the original idea of the teams yeah. yes to make teams so your team uh, georgiana is doing well now thank you i saw you made some changes I have a new... But you, you are close, you know, with this new system. It's very easy to overcome other teams. Yes? Yeah. Because we, what we are doing is like a, a big race. Yes? And you, you, you can be from Tasha in Intrecere Europeista. Yes? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you also. How about you, Christian? How is your team doing? Well, I think we're doing okay, you know. Just, I try to contact my team members and they are responding anyway. So we, we watch in you, your courses on the internet or YouTube, so... It it's, good. it's a good thing, you know, to have a united team is very important, yes? Yes, yes. We, we talk to each other sometimes. We, we, we need teams. We, in the current day, yes, if you don't have a team, you can do nothing in the real world. Yes? Even to play basketball, you need five players. Even to play football, you need 11 players. Yes? If you want to make a, a, a spacecraft, you may you make a rocket to go to the to the moon, you need a team. Right? You cannot do it just by yourself. Yes. And uh, this encourages you to have teams. Yes, but what you should not forget, maybe you are very, very proud, yes, because your team has 138 points. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You should not remember, not forget. Yes. Very important thing that my team has one thousand four hundred points. There is an idea for you. You should make a team leader. You know, you see who contributes more with 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 work and who is involved more. And then... every team has a leader always. Yes. Well, and, and the and, and the leader in 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 a team is the one who makes more points. That is the leader. Uh, but precisely, what we want to avoid, yes, is this individualistic behavior that is bad for the team. That people, you know, I know some people who are very interested in making points and so on. And they started to make points all the time. Then they started to try to look how many points they made themselves. Yes? And this is not important. What matters is the points of the team. And what matters also is that your team is solidary. Yes? And, and it's... Um, how do you call it? There is equality as much as possible in your team. You remember when you study uh, how can we measure economic development? Yes? Yes. I like it very much when you said, no, it's not the income per capita is not important. What matters is equality and all those other things. Why do not you apply the same thing to your team? Well, we do apply. And in that case, there is only one team leader. And that leader will be you. Because you, the way you explain us, that, you know, we'll be able to, to, to study better. And the make idea, it. you know, we need teams, Christian. Yes, of course. And we are all in the same team. Because in the real world, we, we will have to compete with people from China, from... Uh, the United States, from Germany, from Brazil, from Australia, from Taiwan, or from Korea, you know? 
And it's not good that we just have competition between us. It's good we can have competition just to train ourselves, you know, competition between the teams and so on. But we never forget this principle that we need to work in teams, yes? And our teams are especially powerful because our teams are inter university and multinational teams. <clears throat> For instance, in your team, there's people from Yuri Fedkovich, Chernivtsi National University. And there's people from Universitatea Stefan Cel Mare in Suchava. And people from Universitatea Alexandru Iancusa in Yash. And this is important, yes? Because sometimes the best people for your team do not necessarily have to come from your same village. Yes? And that's why we encourage the creation of these teams. Yes? And because many of you study international relations or international economics, it's important to have this opportunity to have international teams. How is your Ukrainian, Christian? Mm. I, I can understand a few words, but not not very good. I am learning Ukrainian now. I know the, you're taking the course, but it's just uh, inconvenient for me the time. Maybe if the time changed, then I might and be... I'm studying also. This is a very good book, and I'm studying it. A book is also capital, you know? Well, I it's bought, investment. I bought this book. I paid, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 euros for the book. And I know that there are the countries, poor countries in the world, where students do not buy books. Well, it's capital, you know? There are some people, who, if you have capital, if you have books, you learn faster and better than if you do not have them, yes? There's, there are people who tell me, no, but you can also, you can download, you can enter the Wikipedia, you can do this. Yes, of course you can. Yes, but it's not the same thing. Capital is important. Yes? Good. How about Paula? Paula, she was the first to join today. Can you remove your mute, please, Paula? Yes, you can hear me now? Yes, and I can see you better now also. I don't know what changed. I can see you very well now. So, Paula, <laughs> how is your team doing? Well, my team, uh, I think it's doing uh, okay, but we still need to... Ah, your team. Your team was doing very well before. Yes, I know that. Because it was because the idea the of an individualistic person who just wanted to accumulate lots of points and not caring about the other team members. It's exactly, and they care less about, uh, about this. I don't know. I will it's have important. to. Yes, I will have to talk again with them. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. I don't know it's about if it's about timing or stuff like that because I know my colleague uh, from Suchava it's working as well so yes, it's, it's going to be a little tough. You, if you want to um, yes. in this table that we have now it's also yes. possible to um, I'll share my screen again. It is possible also to rank people, if you click here, if you click on median raw marks. Yes. Then you have a different ranking. Okay. That is by the median member of the team. Mm -hmm. The one that is in the middle, not the last one, the one in the middle. Okay. What I do want to do is a ranking of the leaders. Maybe 
Christian would like to have a ranking of the leaders or something, but it's precisely what we try to avoid. Yes, because exactly. we have many people. If you want to be a good leader, then make your team be the first one. Okay. <laughs> Not make you yeah. yourself be the first one, your team. Because if you are a leader, you have to lead your team. Yes, I know that. Like, like a shepherd. How do you call it? Uh, Choban. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Arman, are you still there? Can you can you still follow? Can you write? Because good, Arman, you're very important to us. Arman is my favorite student. Yes. You should know this that Arman is really important. And when Arman joined the website, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, he was able to raise the ranking of his team very much. Yes? In just one day. Imagine if he joined today as well. Up to four different places in the ranking he could climb for his team. Yes? So Armand is really important. And of course, Georgiana is important too. Because Georgiana is the one that helped me promote the course and the new system with the other students in the class in Yash. Yes? And that is very important. Georgiana is a leader in that sense. And that is very important. But all of us, all the people in Yash, but also the greater team with all the people that we have in Jitomir, in Chernivtsi, in Suchava, in Yash, and in other places, it's very important that we work uh, together as a team. Yes? And I know there are many people that still, that they participate. For instance, we had on, on YouTube, we had also one of my favorite students today. Her name is um, Marisha, Marisha Giriada. She is from Chernivtsi. Uh, she's Ukrainian, yes? But she speaks Romanian perfectly, yes? Marisha. And she's a really, really good student. In fact, even today that they had problems to join by Hangouts from Valentina's group, what she did is that she joined on YouTube and she wrote her name there in the, in the comments on YouTube. Marisha is very important and Marisha is not participating online very much. If I ask you, Christian, about Marisha, do you know Marisha? Mm, no, not really. You don't no. know her because she does not write comments in the seminar discussions. She does not vote on other colleagues' comments, and she does not uh, log in to the site very often, and she does not appear there in the rankings very high. I think she has only four points or something. She's in the pool. Yes? But I tell you, Christian, Marisha is outstanding. The team that manages to get Marisha to work for their team will be a privileged one yes but we for her to be able to um, to participate probably she needs to know it because i think she comes from a group in which many people do not participate so much so it's important that we explain how important it is that they participate yes because I see, Christian, you participate also in the seminar discussions very much. You wrote about the Harris Todaro model. Yes. Yes, and you copied from some article, some research article, recent one about the Harris Todaro model and the migrant. Yes, Ooh, yes. Right? I found that on the internet. Very, very good uh, review there. The article was great about. This is a very new one. 
probably mm -hmm. because you know in this course um that you are taking now in yash we started it like four years ago or so and and we started using the harris todaro model maybe three years ago and at that time there was still nothing written on the application of the harris todaro model to the migrant crisis in europe and now it's good to see you well, was happy to see when you posted that comment to see that they starting to do something if you look at the date probably it's a very recent one i tell you like three years ago when we started to discuss these issues nobody had written about them specifically right good <clears throat> Any comments or questions about today's lecture? About international trade? Georgiana, so tell me when you finish your master's degree, where will you work? In a call center? Well, I, I prefer not, not. Where I, would you like not. to work? In a robot factory? I I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's still time. Yes, but you know the, the call centers they are very good jobs in Yash. Well I worked at the call center for three months, uh three years ago and uh, it wasn't for me. It wasn't very stressful. Um the pressure was uh, very very hard. Like you see, Armand, what we explain in our course can be applied to real cases because we teach positive theories, theories that try to explain reality. Yes, and we contrast them with cases such as Georgiana's. I asked her where she will work, and she told me where she has worked. Probably she has not worked in a factory, in a microchip factory or anything. No? Good. Why? Because there is no capital in Romania. Yes? And there are lots of young people. So what can you do with a lot of young people and no capital? A call center. Yes? Good. Paula. Are you, yes. going, are, are you going to work in a call center or have you already worked or are you still working now in a call center? <laughs> no. I was working on Conduent, but it was not like a call center, it was an outsourcing company. Yes. And to an automotive uh, company, which is called Delphi or Delphi. But what did you do there? Sorry again? What did you do in those companies? Uh, in um, I was providing information uh, regarding our project in Spanish and English language. By telephone? Uh, by phone, yes, and by emails. Well, the same thing, you know? Yes. Something where you need people, yes? And we need exactly. you need little capital, you just need a phone. And maybe a computer yes yes uh, and it's the kind of jobs that you can get there yes and it's the kind of things that yeah she can export to other places yes so when some politicians they tell you you know our country is very advanced because we produce software like india yes right Yes. It is because software is something that does not have a lot of capital per worker, right? And, mm -hmm. and uh, other countries, which, uh, you, you said you work in Delphi or where, where are these companies from? It's from United States and produces injectors for cars and pumps. For the most developed, you mentioned today uh, some car companies like Mercedes, 
the BMW so on. So Delphi is from the United States. And yes. you see the, 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 the United States, they say it's better for us to have a person providing information in Romania. Right? Yes. But the, right. the factory for Delphi for it's not in Romania. Right? And, and, and that was the point, is the Hexeruli model, yes, tries to explain us this. So now, the homework for you three, for the ones who are now on Hangout and for Armand indirectly. So the homework for Christian, for Georgiana and for Paula is to convince Armand to participate on the site. Okay. <laughs> to convince Armand to participate in the discussion. Because I tell you something, Armand is very good. Last it's year, very good. I had, yes, last year I had a course, yes, which was um, um, it was in the third year. It was about the European Union policies, yes. And we had multiple choice tests and so on, but we also had um, seminar discussions and we had a final exam that consisted in a multiple choice test about factual questions and also like an essay type question, very similar to the uh, weekly seminar discussions that we have, yes? And Armand did not very well on the multiple choice test, yes? But he was the best in the final exam in the essay type question. Not only the best, in fact, of all the answers to the essay type question, he was the only one that was worth reading. which means a lot of merit for him. And he, despite not having a, such a good uh, grade in the multiple choice test, because of this excellent um, performance in the essay question compared to his colleagues, he got the best grade, yes? And you, should convince him to participate because we need everyone in the seminar discussions. And this also applies to the people in your team. No student left behind. This is the new principle, yes, that we will introduce now in our teams. If you leave some of your team members behind, it will affect your team negatively. Okay, Christian? Because you want to be a leader, right? No, 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 no. And this is, and no, yes, yes, I want you to be a leader. And no. I want you to, to train you to be a leader. And I start by training you with this. If you want to be a leader, no team member left behind. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, um, we also have some people watching on, watching on YouTube. Uh, those of you who are watching on YouTube, Cornelia Petrovic, Marisha Ziriada, uh, Georgiana was on YouTube before, Oksana Iluk is on YouTube. If you watch this on YouTube now, live or later, uh, because it will be available for the students taking this course, please write your name in the comments to the video not just now in the chat because the chat disappears when the live transmission finishes but you can write your name on the comments you can also like the video if you have uh, liked the the video because it's important it's important feedback for us to to know which videos have uh, drawn more attention which topics students are more interested in which 
videos have uh, received more more likes it's something important uh, for us i thank you all very much and next week we will have a really important uh, lecture i believe which will be about um whether a development policy works or not whether development aid policy works whether aid is good for the recipient countries or not but not only that even more what kinds of development policies are more effective yeah. so next uh, week it will be about policy yes Today we could have discussed other topics about um, international finance, yes, about debt, about, but they are more complicated, yes. And um, I prefer to focus on international trade, which is more important. And if you see, it, it's interlinked: international trade and international debt are linked in international capital movements and international uh, trade are interlinked because if a country has a trade deficit for instance it needs to compensate this trade deficit on other parts of its uh, uh, accounts with the rest of the world usually by importing capital yes by receiving capital but the, the, I think it's better we concentrate on the most important, most basic things, such as trade. Remember, the absolute advantage, Adam Smith, specialization, division of labor. David Ricardo, the comparative advantage. Heck Cherulin, factor endowments as the source for comparative advantage. The Linder hypothesis, the importance of demand for, for comparative advantage, and the new trade theories and the importance of economies of scale. This is very important to explain the main patterns of world trade, of how developed countries trade with developing countries, how developed countries trade with other similar developed countries, but Developing countries do not trade very much with each other. Thank you all very much and see you next week at the same time, 11.30 Eastern European time. Until then, have a nice week. Bye-bye.